Last thing you have is uh, people that are more likely to vote. Yes. Yeah. Old people, and that's yes. top of the list. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to get into some demographics here. Okay. Yay. About which which type of people vote certain ways, and then um, now, guys, there's a lot of generalizations here, so uh, nothing is set in stone, but. Um, anyhow, um, then we're going to talk about polling, okay? And so that's kind of an important uh, thing to understand uh, or be wise about uh, when we start getting around towards elections about what polls you can trust and what kind of polls you can't trust, okay? Because people are gullible. Yes? <laughs> yeah. Not Nigerian. Abby's pointing a hand over there, okay? Okay. Uh, um, so let's start with uh, voting behavior demographics, okay? Now, the, the strange, strange thing here, guys, is this is changing, like, as we speak, like, during your lifetime, like, over the last four years, okay? And so one of the first things I have for voting behavior is income and occupation. So in the past, guys, going kind of through, you know, the, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, is the higher your income, you tended more to be what party? Republican, okay? Um, the higher, you know, your income, your occupation, you know, more professionals, white-collar people. You guys know the difference between white-collar and blue-collar, right? So white-collar folks used to be generally Republican. And... Now, there were times that blue-collar workers, you know, that generally Democratic, switched over to vote for Republicans, i.e. Nixon in 72 and Reagan 1980 and 84. Uh, they called them Nixon Democrats and Reagan Democrats, okay? I mean, Reagan won every state but one in 84. Nixon won every state but one in 72. So you know you had a lot of crossover of Democrats voting for this Republican president, yes? Now, since then, if you look at our Electoral College and so forth, we're much more divided country, okay? So what we looked at in 2016, as you break down 2016 voting, is your higher educated, your uh, people with college degrees or advanced degrees, like me, Master Ebright, <laughs> voted more for um, Hillary than for Trump. Okay, and what you saw in breaking out those those numbers in 2016 is the lower education people, which tend to be more blue collar, were voting for the Republican Trump. Okay, so we're kind of in a in a transition, I believe. Now, a lot depends on the Republican Party's stances, their platform moving forward. Do they kind of continue with this America first, you know, bring manufacturing back to the United States, not all this free trade with China, where China gets this great deal. Um, if the Republican Party stays with that, I think so will more blue-collar people stay with the Republican, even if Trump doesn't run. Okay, so, uh, and you kind of see people that are highly educated look down on conservatives, on Democrats for being, or on conservatives uh, and Republicans for being, you know, old-fashioned, um, uh, being stupid, not very educated, um, you know, rednecks, hicks, you know, th these sorts of uh, things. Um, so that's kind of your elite. People, and they look down on, uh, you know, people that think kind of old-fashioned ways, I guess. So, to be honest, on income and occupation, we can't really say it today. Okay, you have a mix. Okay, next thing we'll look at demographically is gender. Now, for when we look at women voters, we don't have to go very, very far back. We only have to go back 102 years. Because women first voted in 1920, okay? So when you look at 
between 1920 and 1980 and how women vote, not really one way or another, Democrat or Republican, kind of split, okay? Since 1980, we can gather this. Women vote slightly more Democratic than Republican overall, okay? But we can factor out of that two things. One, married women vote more Republican. Single women vote heavily Democratic. So by virtue of you're married and you're single, women generally overall vote a little bit more Democrat. Does that make sense? Age, under 30. What do you think? Very Democratic. Very Democratic. Under 30. Then next thing you know, you wake up, you're 30 years old, you got a couple of kids, you got a good job, paying taxes, you got a mortgage, kids are expensive, and you're paying all these taxes. You're like, where's this tax money going? I got to pay all this in taxes. I can use this for my family. You're like, I'm going to vote Republican and lower my taxes. Voting for your self-interest. Okay? Um, so in your peak earning years between 30 and 65, the population tends to be a little bit more Republican. Over 65, it depends on your income. So, guys, if you have saved for retirement, you have a nice nest egg so that when you hit 65, you travel and this do this sort of thing. We ate, uh, we ate over at Napoli's last night. Uh, any guys eating over there? Napoli's? Okay. Ella, Ella Ellsfield, her dad is part owner of Napoli's. It's a 37th and Rock North. Uh, it's an Italian eatery. It is fantastic. It's it's our new favorite restaurant, okay? And Wednesdays, you get five, uh, $5 fours of wine, okay? What good does that do us? Okay. And the best part is she's my house captain. There you go. And her dad is coming to talk to my business law class today, okay, which is cool. So, hey. I talking about? Um, if you have a big nest egg. Yeah, yeah, nest egg. So, you know, my wife ran into one of her former colleagues from Coke. She was an environmental lawyer for Coke. And she retired. And she's my wife's friends with like three of these ladies that are retired. And um, they're talking about all these trips they're going. You know, and I'm like, you guys need to call my wife and take her with you. She needs to go do some fun stuff, okay? But, um, yeah, so if you have that nest egg, guys, you're still paying taxes, okay? And you've done your job. You have worked during your life, and you're reaping the rewards for the hard work and saving that you've done. You're going to tend to vote Republican. If you are living off of Social Security on a fixed income, okay, Generally, you're going to tend to vote more Democrat okay, when it comes to over 65. <coughs> Let's talk about religion. Okay. When we look at religion, guys, um, prior to 1980, Protestants tended to be more Republican. Catholics tended to be more Democrat. Now, you guys remember during when we talked about the New Deal, right, how Catholics flocked to the Democratic Party under Roosevelt. Social justice, helping the poor, okay? Since 1980, when we look at demographics here, it doesn't really matter what religion you are. It matters how religious you are. So, 
If you are a practicing Catholic or a practicing Protestant like me, who goes to church every Sunday, okay, and sometimes people go to church more than once a week, they tend to be Republican. Not all of them. Some of the most liberal people I've ever met were very religious. You probably know some, okay? So it's not 100%. The less religious you are, the more likely you are to be a Democrat, okay? Now, you could be a Christian or a Catholic, and maybe not practicing, probably lean Democrat, okay? Does that make sense? Now, what's the big, what's the big thing that changed for religious Catholics? Uh, yeah, abortion, gay rights, these sorts of issues, social issues, um, and the Republican Party has tried to adopt that kind of family values platform. You saw that in the video, okay? Now, that's dangerous to the Republican Party, in a sense, okay? As some of these Republicans that were talking yesterday at the end of the video were saying, I don't want the Republican Party to be a party of only religious people. You got to have a bigger tent than that, okay? And I agree with that, okay? Uh, I I don't want to live in a uh, a Christian ran government. I don't want religious people dictating to me my life, okay? That's my relationship with God. I don't need government telling me that. We didn't sign up for a theocracy, right? <coughs> But should, you know, values, morals, which we find in religion, should they impact our society? Absolutely. Should they impact our decision-making process? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but kind of going that theocratic route is dangerous for everybody. Okay. You don't want to live in a theocracy. Because that's one of the types of dictatorships that are. All right. Um, ethnicity. Okay, guys, we have a ton of different ethnic groups in our in our society. Okay, so you really have to point out the particulars here. Yeah. Is there a difference between ethnicity and race? <coughs> yes. So ethnic background. Like you have, you know, like I think I think you can draw some distinctions between the two. Okay, they're similar. So let's just take African Americans, for instance. Okay, now the number is around eighty-five to ninety percent of African Americans vote what Democrat. Okay, now. If you look at Trump in 2016, Trump received more African American male votes than any Republican president has in the last 30 years. Okay. African American women stayed away from Trump. But African Americans generally vote heavily Democratic as a block. And you saw Jesse Jackson talk about that in the video. Okay. Um, Hispanics, which is a larger group. This is interesting, okay? Now, if we have immigrants coming from Latin America, the vast majority of those immigrants are going to be of what religion? Mostly Catholic, okay? Uh, from the Spanish roots, okay? The Catholicism, okay? Um, it's always interesting to me because you, you think, okay, but the Republican Party tends to be a party where religious people find a home. Wouldn't you think that a lot of these folks that have come up from our from the southern southern south of us uh, would be Republican? And traditionally, that has not been the case, but but is moving in that direction. Trump did better with Hispanics, again, way better 
than John McCain did or Mitt Romney, previous Republican presidential candidates. And if you look at polling numbers right now, we'll talk about polls in a minute. Biden is underwater with Hispanic America. Like, they don't like him. As in underwater is like his approval rating went under 50? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, George W. Bush, when he ran in 2000, he's from Texas. He spoke Spanish. He's fluent in Spanish. He did actually pretty well with Hispanic voters. If you look at some districts in 2020 and 2016, that are majority Hispanic districts, like in Texas. Okay, like that district has more Hispanics than whites, or blacks, or anybody else. Trump carried some of those districts that were majority Hispanic. Okay, so it's it's interesting to watch this. I would say generally, if you're talking about people that immigrated here from Mexico, Central America, or South America. I would go about 60%, 65% Democrat, 35% Republican, okay? If you're talking about Cuban Americans, which there are a lot in Florida, okay? So you guys heard of Senator Marco Rubio? He's a Cuban American. Senator Ted Cruz is a Cuban American. Cuban Americans tend to be very Republican. Puerto Ricans lean a little bit to the Democratic Party. Now, guys, in Puerto Rico, you've had Republican governors elected, Democratic governors elected in Puerto Rico. They have the two-party system like we do. Okay? So um, it, nothing is a given here. So either party. Oh, we don't have any Hispanic students in here. Okay. You got some Hispanic in. Okay, so like this term Latinx, okay, which really grates on most of the Hispanics that I've talked to, they hate that term. Okay, that's not Republicans pushing that term. Okay, all right. Um, what about Jews? What do you think about Jews? Republican or Democrat? I want to say I think Republican, but then that probably means they pro-Democrat. It's pretty split. Um, now, what's interesting about this, one of the two parties has traditionally been a staunch supporter and defender of the state of Israel. Which party is that? Republican Party, okay? Now, remember how I said a lot of Protestants, especially practicing Christian Protestants, vote Republican, okay? So most of the elected leaders in Congress that are Republican are Christians, not all of them. But this, this last six weeks or so at my church, our pastors have been talking about the book of Revelation. Okay. Now, if you've studied the book of Revelation, it's it's really uh, filled with all kinds of symbolism and um, you know, plagues and just like the end times type stuff, right? The typology is strong. Well, it depends on how you interpret it, right? And guys, listen, Catholics and Protestants tend to interpret Revelation differently. So at my church, guys, <coughs> we take it more literally than symbolically. So I don't know how many times the Bible mentions God's chosen people, but when it mentions God's chosen people, who is he talking about? Jews. So, if you are a Protestant and you believe that Revelation or the Rapture is a real thing that's going to happen, you think to yourself, okay, 
So do I want to be with the Jews or do I want to be against the Jews when the crap hits the fan? Uh, I think I'm going to go with God's chosen people. I'm going to go with the Jews over here. Okay? So, guys, Protestants, evangelicals tend to be very supportive. But it's interesting because you have Jews that from Israel, you know, the, the homeland, that vote with the party that is not as supportive of Israel. And it's about 50-50 with Jews. Okay, it's kind of interesting. Isn't, like, what, what, was it to, uh, Rashid Tlaib or one of the people in the squad who was, like, supposed to be really anti-Semitic? Uh, at least one, if not all. Uh, Ilan Omar. Yeah. Okay. Last thing. Geography. Now look at the map. Right? You got the left coast. Get it? Right? The left coast? Okay. Yeah. Votes heavily Democratic on the west coast. Now, New England also votes heavily Democratic. Okay, so I don't know, something in the water. I, I'm not sure, but I'm kidding. Um, no, you got the South, you got the Bible Belt, you got the Midwest, you've got the Great Plains, okay? Um, and the country's pretty divided geographically, okay? I don't know if I mentioned this, you guys, you know, they refer to us as flyover country, yes? Yeah, I mean, Everything New York and Los Angeles, that's all that really matters. Everything in between, they're just, you know, hay seeds and hits. Yeah. So, no, I mean, just geographically, um, you can see how the country is divided. Okay, now the Great Lakes region up there, uh, that's how Trump was elected. He won Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, which Republican hadn't done in a long time. Um, and a Repub no Republican has ever won the presidency without winning the state of Ohio, which is an interesting fact, okay? Now, Florida is a huge prize, which is a swing state. Texas at this point is not a swing state. It's trending that direction, okay? California obviously is not a swing state. So the biggest swing state out there is Florida. So Florida becomes the focus, okay? So uh, President Biden today is gonna from what I heard on the radio this morning, is going to speak to that law in Florida that was just passed. Okay. How many guys know what I'm talking about? Right? Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So um, that's interesting because I don't know if, if you poll the American people, what percentage of Americans would want kindergartners through third grade to be taught about gender? No, I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think. A lot of Democrats probably don't want their kids to hear that stuff when they're five years old. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I am. Um, so Biden is supposed to come out and criticize, by name, Governor DeSantis. Now, the state legislature passed it. So you got a lot of elected officials in Tallahassee that voted for this. Okay? And then the governor signed it into law. DeSantis didn't pass it by himself. Okay? But so... The focus is DeSantis because he's the biggest threat to the Democrats right now, Governor of Florida. Okay, if you look at opinion polls of who people want to run for president for the Republicans, number one by far is Donald Trump. Number two is Ron DeSantis. Okay, I was talking to somebody uh, that knew somebody that knew somebody that was with Trump. Recently, uh, that said for sure he's running. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But guys, there it is. All right, let's talk about polling. Okay? I got to do this pretty quick. What time we got? 35? Yeah. Because I got this far fourth hour yesterday. So we're picking up. We're behind. Okay? But that's okay. Um, they're going to get this today on polling, all right? So, what makes a good poll? Write that down. Polling is your header, okay? 
And a good pole has the following characteristics. When they say 51% of the American people believe this, how do you know you can believe that poll? You with me? Okay. Now, number one. I didn't spell that right, did I? No. Oh, God. I don't need an E, do I? That's why I was looking at you guys. Truly random. Okay. Right? Can I ask you a question? How many of you guys at your house still have a landline? Land line telephone. We don't have the landline, but we have like a home phone number still. Is that can you call it? Yeah, it's just attached to a cell phone, not a landline. Uh oh, you can do that? Yeah. So your cell phone has two numbers? No, we have a home phone cell phone instead of a landline phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> One? None of you guys have like a phone hooked to the wall? Just two of you? That's fucking crazy. Literally within the last three years that we got rid of the little All right, so you guys know what a phone book is? The phone book doesn't have your cell phone number. It's got your landline. So right there, guys, polling is messed up. Because my cell phone number is not public. Many of you, now do you guys ever get, like, calls on your cell phone that from yes. people you, okay somewhere they got your number okay this is why you gotta be careful about giving out your information okay but yeah i get these calls uh rocket mortgage that calls me all the time i looked them up online i filled out an information thing uh and now i get rocket mortgage calling okay warranties and stuff like that for my truck okay all right now so guys 1948, 1948, Truman oh, yeah. Dude, right? Oh, Guys, in 1948, not everybody had phones yet. But generally, people that had phones had more money. And as we talked about earlier, people with more money tended to be what? So when they were doing public opinion polls in 48, the people who were answering the phone were more likely to be Republican. Yes? And so the polls all showed Truman winning. Or excuse me, Truman's the Democrat, sorry. Dewey's the Republican, okay? And so they showed Dewey winning. And in reality, there were more Democratic voters that year for Trump, or Trump. <laughs> Dewey. Okay. Now, can I start this recording over? Sorry, guys. All right. Uh, yeah, so that's a good example. So if we, if we go with that, right now, can we trust any poll? Most of these polls are conducted over the phone. So polling companies have to, have to get creative here, okay? So another major thing here um, is that you have to ask, when you take a poll, is an understandable question. The people you're asking the question to need to be able to understand what you're asking. Let me give you an example. I call you up on the phone and I say, will you take this poll? And you say, sure. Okay. Um, does it seem possible or impossible to you that the Nazi extermination of the Jews never happened? Impossible. What? 6% of respondents said the Holocaust never happened. I didn't understand the question. Okay, now there are people that believe that, believe it or not, okay, but. It's scary that they do. Okay. okay. What, did we make 100 videos to nothing? You have to interpret the responses correctly.
That's right. And report it in an understandable way. Okay. Now, another major factor here is polling size. Okay. Now, when I was in business school a long time ago, we had phone books and everybody had a landline. Okay. I had to conduct my own poll for marketing class. So you go through the phone book at random and just pick, you know, flip through and pick a number and call. Okay. Now, this is before caller ID. How many people do you have to call to get somebody to take your poll? A lot. So if if CNN or Fox News or any other polling organization wants to conduct a poll, they hire a company to call people and conduct the poll for them. You understand? You got to pay those people. So how many people you got? 50 people to get somebody to answer the phone and take the poll? 100 people to get somebody to take the poll? This is expensive. Okay, but the more people you poll, the better, more accurate response you're going to have, or, you know, the better uh, thing. Okay, so there is a formula for this. This is math in honors government class. No. No. Wait, one over. One you can't over have a square over. root in the denominator? That is fine. That would just be negative. Like, 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 negative. Who's got their calculator? Yes. Right now. Right. Go. All right. One over the sample size of 500. Square root. Can everybody do this math? I can. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. 0.04. So, okay, I'm going to move this decimal point here. So what you get is a plus or minus 4.5%. So if you poll 500 people randomly, your margin of error plus or minus 4.5% in either direction. Is that very accurate? No, we need to call another 10,000 people so we can get this up to 1,000. All right, Minty. Give me 1,000. Um, you want it in percentage? Yeah, just give me the same number like you did before. Uh, point oh. Three one six. Three one six. Okay. Plus or minus three point one six percent margin of error. Pretty good. Many, I got one more for you. We're gonna spend a whole lot of money here and call, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand people to get ten thousand responses. One percent. One percent. Okay, plus or minus. Now, guys, nobody polls 10,000 people. It's too expensive. And your margin of error only improves by 2%. You with me? Yeah. So when you look at a poll, what you want to look for, guys, is the margin of error. Okay, first of all, we don't know whether it's truly random or not. You know what I mean? So you got to trust that the polling corporation that is doing this is trying to get a random sample. Now, this is one of my favorite websites during election time, okay? Yes? Has there ever been like a poll that like maliciously like didn't randomly choose? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, there are bad folds out there. Like purposely. Oh yeah. And not like the the dudes. The media like uses these polls to affect gullible thinking people. Oh, well, 60% of the people believe that, so I should believe that, too. You don't think people try and manipulate? Of course they do. Okay, so there are certain polling organizations out there that are more trustworthy than others. You guys remember, in 2016, I don't know if you remember, you were eight years younger, okay? But guys, nobody, well, there were a few people, but most people did not think Donald Trump was going to win in 2016. You understand that, right? Like, people that were Democrats were devastated. Like, they thought Hillary was going to win. Okay? Very few of the polling organizations got it right. The one that was the closest was a, a, a polling organization called Trafalgar. Okay? Because trying to get the right sample of people is important, okay? And it's hard to do. Can you do a poll over the internet on Twitter? Sure, but which people on Twitter are getting that? That poll and which ones aren't? There's so many factors, right? You know Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, they feed you content that you want to hear, that you want to see. They don't feed you content that you disagree with, usually. A YouTube uh, ad would disagree with you. Listen, guys, have you ever seen that show, Social Network, uh, the Netflix documentary, where the guy talks about this guy that used to work for Facebook, and he said how dangerous this is because we're just, what these companies are doing is just reinforcing our own selves. Like, they're having us look in the mirror over and over again, and there's no other view. And this is damaging to our relationships with other people. Listen, guys, I've been, in, I've been paying attention to politics for a long time, and I have strong opinions, but I have no problem getting along with somebody that thinks differently from me. There are a lot of people that do, and social media is a big reason for that. We can't even talk to each other. You know what I mean? I will listen to anybody. You know, and you can't be afraid of that. But what we've created, it's not that you're wrong, that your opinion is wrong. It's that you're evil. That's where we've gotten to in this society. Okay, and polls play a role in this. Now, this is, like I said, a really good website um, that does polling. It's called realclearpolitics.com. Okay, um, I think I must have clicked on something here. Oh, crap. Come back. All right. So, go here. Polls. Election 2022. Okay. So, we can look at Senate polls right now. This is for the November election. And there's Trafalgar. I mentioned them. Okay. This is the state of Missouri. Okay. We got Senate Republican primary. So, you got several Republicans vying for the nomination here. This shows Gretchen Schmidt. It's very close, it shows, okay? But this other poll shows uh, Alabama, okay, Duran up by 10. So if we click on this poll, what they will generally do here, and this is the great thing about this website, is they take um, other polls. So you got Trafalgar, here's one called Missouri Scout. This is another polling organization, and they average them all together. So when you get to a presidential election, guys, there's like, you know, 20 different polls, and then Real Clear Politics averages them all together, and you get the RCP average over here, okay, up at the top, all right? So this one has uh, Hartzell in her head. This one has Schmidt ahead. They average them together to show Schmidt ahead. You follow me? Okay, and then if you click on the Trafalgar poll here, it will show you how they conducted the poll. Okay, so primary survey. Okay, respondents, there were 100, uh, 1,079 respondents. Okay, conducted through these dates. These are likely GOP Republican voters. So you want likely voters. You don't want just registered voters. You want people that have voted in a previous election. They're likely to vote again. That's more accurate. You following me? 
Okay. Uh, margin of error, 2.99%, but we just showed confidence, 95%. Now, methodology is going to be like how many, if you're in a general election, how many Republican voters did you poll? How many Democratic voters did you poll? How many independents? How many men? How many women? How many people with college degrees? How many people? How many minorities? How many African Americans? How many women? How many men? And as we just talked about, guys, that affects the outcome of the poll. Yes? Okay. You too, guys.